So now we will create a very simple calculator with the help of the HTML and the CSS. As you can see, this is the simple calculator that we are going to create. So first of all, we are going to create a folder over here inside the HTML CSS projects folder. So we are going to create the folder that is named as calculator since we are going to create a simple calculator over here. Now guys, inside this calculator folder, we are going to create the HTML and the CSS files. So first of all, we will create index.html file in this case and then we are going to create another file in order to provide the styling with the help of the CSS file so guys over here we have the style.css file as well so guys inside the index.html file we will have our HTML elements so we are going to use the emmet abbreviation that is exclamation mark in order to create the HTML template over here and for the title part we are simply going to provide the string that is simple calculator now guys apart from this inside the body tag we are going to provide our code so what we are going to do is first of all we are going to create a div tag with the class that is main class over here and inside this we are supposed to have the text area so for reference over here I have opened the calculator in this case that is a standard calculator so this box over here where all the numbers will appear will be represented by this particular text area so guys over here we will provide the text area as the name and the ID as well so I have provided the text area value for the name and ID part and then initially we will provide the data as zero in this case now guys after this we are going to have another div tag with the class container where we are going to define all these buttons that you can see so guys we can create all these buttons with the help of the div tags over here so we are going to have the div tag with the class row in this case and every button will be represented with the help of this particular class that is row over here so guys first of all we have this button that is ce so in this case let us provide the data as well and i'll simply going to copy this line of code over here and we are going to provide other buttons that is C and then backspace and then we have divide so guys over here for the clear part we will provide the capital X letter and then over here we will provide the divide symbol so guys basically we have created the four div tags with the help of the class that is row over here which we are going to use inside the style.css file let me just save this file now and try opening this file on the browser so simply I'm going to copy this path over here or simply you can also use the live server feature so basically you can install the live server extension on the VS code that will help you in order to go live over here so guys simply we can use this feature as well so let me click over here on the go live button as you can see so it is starting right now and basically by default this will be the URL where your server will be live and you will be able to view the HTML web page now guys whatever changes you make in the HTML and the style.css file over here will be reflected on this HTML page so over here we have not defined find the CSS file to be linked to this particular HTML page so simply we are going to use this link tag over here along with the rel attribute that is style sheet and the href attribute will have the style.css file the file that we have created over here in order to define the CSS properties so guys let me just save this file now and the changes will be automatically reflected over here now guys what we want to do is we want all these buttons that is having these particular text to be present on one particular row over here and also we want them to have certain background color along with the fixed width and height so guys what we will do is first of all for the main class that is for the main calculator over here we will define certain CSS properties so let's say we define the background color as a yellow color for the entire calculator and we want it to be present at the middle of the screen over here so guys what we have to do is let us also provide certain padding of 20 pixels so let me just save this file now and without actually reloading the page you will see that the changes are now getting reflected on this particular URL that's because of the live server that we are using now guys what we want to do is we want to have the fixed width of this particular calculator so let's say we have the width of 40 percent over here as far as the entire width of the screen is concerned so as you can see this is the 40 percent let us reduce the width to 30 percent over here so as you can see this is the 30 percent width and also in order to get this particular calculator at the middle of the screen simply we can provide margin equal to auto over here so guys when we provide margin equal to auto let me just save this file now and as you can see now the calculator is getting 
displayed at the middle of the screen over here. Now guys, let us provide certain CSS properties for this div tags in such a way that all these elements are displayed in one particular row over here. So what we have to do is we need to use this particular container class in this case. So guys, let me just correct the spelling of this container class over here and then inside the style.css file, we need to make use of this particular class that is container and then guys, we need to provide the display property it is equal to grid. That's because the layout that is getting displayed on this calculator app, it is in the form of the grid layout over here. So guys, similarly, we are going to make use of this grid layout in this case. Let me just save this file now and if we see the changes, there are no changes right now. That's because only one column is configured by default and that is why all the div tags are coming inside just one column over here. In order to increase the number of columns, we need to make use of the grid template column CSS property and then for this particular CSS property, we need to provide the width of the columns. So guys, either you can provide some length measurement or else you can also provide the auto keyword so that the width of the columns is taken automatically. And since we need four columns over here in order to provide the buttons inside the calculator in the form of the grid layout, we will be providing the auto keyword four times over here. So when we save this file once again, and if you notice the changes over here, as you can see, all the div tags are now getting displayed on just one line and they are separated with the help of the columns inside the grid. Now guys, apart from this, also we want to provide certain CSS properties to all these buttons, which are represented with the help of the div tag over here. So let me just copy the class name that is row in this case. And then guys, what we will do is we will provide the fixed width and height over here. So let's say we have 40 pixels of width and then also the 40 pixels of height in this case. So we provide the height attribute as well. And also we want to provide certain background color. So let's say we have the background color as gray color over here. So when we save this file, you will see that these are the changes that are getting reflected in this case. We have all the columns that are getting displayed over here and we have the fixed width and height for this particular div tag. Apart from this, we will also get these characters at the center of the box over here. So what we will do is simply we will provide the text align it is equal to center and in order to get the letters vertically aligned, we can provide the line height attribute as well. So simply we will provide the line height attribute in this case which must be equal to the height of this particular row class so it is 40 pixels over here when we save this file now so as you can see all the letters are now getting displayed at the middle of the button guys we can provide a lighter version of this gray color over here so let me just change the gray color to this particular lighter version so when we save this file now as you can see these are the buttons that are getting displayed now guys let me just zoom in little bit so that we can see the calculator properly over here so as you can see these are the top four buttons that are getting displayed over here. Now guys, apart from this, also we want to align this content inside the text area at the right hand side. So simply what we can do is we can have the text area tag over here and simply we can provide the text align attribute. So in this case, we will provide text align. It is equal to right over here. So when we save this file, as you can see, now the number is getting displayed on the right hand side. Now guys, similarly, what we will do is we will have these numbers and also the multiplication icon over here inside the second row as far as the sun container is concerned. So simply we have to come inside the index.html file and I'll copy these lines of code over here and simply we need to provide the content that is 7, 8, 9 and then multiplication. So over here we will provide 7 as the number then 8 and then 9 and then this multiplication as the small x letter. So let me just save this file now and if you notice the change over here as you can see these are the buttons that are getting displayed on the second row now. Guys apart from this we can also provide certain row gap over over here so that there is certain gap in between the rows in this case so simply inside the css file for the container class we can provide the row gap over here and a row gap of 5 pixels can provide a good amount of gap in between the rows so when we save this file now as you can see we have got the gaps in between the rows now now guys apart from this we will also provide the other numbers as well so let me just copy paste these lines of code once again over here inside the html file so guys we have the third row over here inside the container and this is how the buttons look like in this case. Apart from this, let me just quickly provide the last two rows over here as well inside this calculator. So guys, as you can see, we have also provided the last two rows over here. And apart from this, we have also adjusted certain width of the main class and the text area as well, in which case we have provided the number of columns and the number of rows in such a way that it aligns better along with the other buttons over here inside the container. Now guys, what we can do is in order to make these buttons 
look more decent we will provide the background color of white for all these numbers over here so simply for the numbers inside this calculator we are going to provide another class name that is number in this case and then guys let me just copy this class name to the other numbers as well so that only for these numbers we are going to have the white color as the background color and then after providing the background color as well we are going to also have the hover pseudo class that will change the background color when we get the mouse cursor on the buttons over here so simply inside the style.css file we will provide the number class in this case and then guys we are simply going to provide the background color of white color over here let me just save this file now so as you can see we have all these numbers with the white color in this case apart from this we can also have certain borders as well so guys as you can see we have the white colors for all these numbers right now apart from this let us have some different shade of white color over here so basically we are going to have this shade of white color over here so as you can see this is the background color now guys when we get the mouse cursor on this particular row that is the button we want to change the background color to some different color in this case so what we can do is for this row class over here simply we are going to have the hover pseudo class and inside this we are going to have the background color so let's say we want to have the background color as gray color in this case let me just save this file now so now if we get the mouse cursor over here as you can see it is changing the background color to the gray color which means it is giving some feedback to the user that this is the button that is going to be clicked in this case apart from this also we will provide the cursor it is equal to pointer over here let me just save this file now so as you can see the cursor is getting updated to the pointer icon over here we can have some other version of the gray color as well based on your requirement so let me just change it to some lighter version of the gray color over here let me just save this file now so as you can see the buttons are now getting a different background color in this case so guys based on your requirements you can have the different background colors or any other css properties with the help of these class names just like how we have defined inside the css file over here guys we can also have multiple class names for a particular html element as you can see these numbers are having two class names over here and from two different class names we are having the multiple css properties and the css property that is defined at the later stage inside the external css file will be implemented on the user interface that is on the web page over here so guys in this way we have successfully created a very simple calculator with the help of the html and the css properties comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to the channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll be creating more html and the css projects in the upcoming videos so stay tuned so guys we are going to create a responsive navigation bar that will look like this that is a horizontal navigation bar over here along with some background color when we get the mouse cursor on this nav bar items and then when we decrease the width of the screen over here which means when we view this on smaller devices the navigation bar will be converted to the vertical navigation bar over here so guys we will check this with the help of the html and the css code so guys over here inside the html css projects folder we are going to create another folder that is navigation bar in this case and then inside the navigation bar folder we are going to have the index.html file and the style.css files over here so guys let me just create the style.css file as well so guys we have created both the files over here so inside the index.html we are going to have the html code so let me just use this emmet abbreviation that is exclamation mark in order to have the default html template and then guys for the title part we are going to have the navigation bar as the title of this page and also we are going to link this style css file with the help of this link tag over here now guys apart from this inside the body tag we are going to define the html elements so what we are going to do is let's say we have the diff tag with the class nav bar over here so simply we are going to create the diff tag with the class that is nav bar in this case and then guys inside this we are going to have more diff tags that are going to have the navigation bar item so guys simply we are going to create the diff tag with the class item over here inside which we are going to have the a tag with the hash character as the href and the first element that we have for our navigation bar is the home so basically this is the first item inside the navigation bar and similarly we are going to have multiple items over here so let's say we have the second item as a blog then the third item as videos and then the fourth items as 
languages that are programming languages over here let me just save this file now and click on this go live icon that can help us in order to display the web page on the browser so guys this can be done with the help of the live server extension on the vs code so if you see on the web browser over here these are the four items that we want to include inside our navigation bar now guys these are looking just like simple links on the web page but we want to convert it into a horizontal navigation bar and when we reduce the width of the screen over here the navigation bar should be updated to a vertical navigation bar so we will check that as well with the help of the media queries over here so guys simply we have to go inside the style.css file in order to actually make this navbar class look like a navigation bar so over here what we will do is simply we are going to provide certain css properties for the class name that is navbar so we need to provide a dot character followed by the class name that is navbar over here and then guys inside this let us have certain background color first of all so we will have a dark background color that is black color over here and then apart from this we also want to make the display equal to flex so that all the items inside the navbar class that are these tags over here must be displayed in a row by default guys when we provide the display equal to flex over here by default the flex direction is a row and all the elements will be displayed in one row over here so when we save this file now and check the changes on the browser as you can see we have the black color as the background color in this case and also we have all the links over here that are getting displayed with the blue color over here guys we are going to make certain changes for these diff tags so what we have to do is simply we will use the class name that is item since the item class name is representing all the diff tags over here that is individual items inside the flex container so guys simply we have to provide this item class over here and first of all we will provide the padding of 10 pixels in this case and then apart from this what we want to do is all the a tags inside this item class must have some css properties so we are going to define the item class and then all the a tags inside the item so we are going to use the a selector over here first of all we will have the text decoration as none so that we don't have any underline for any of the text that are getting displayed apart from this we will also change the font color to white color so instead of the blue color that is getting displayed over here the white color must be displayed for all these characters so guys let me just save this file now and check the changes so as you can see these are the changes that are getting displayed over here so guys basically this is a very simple navigation bar that we have just created now what we will do is when we get the mouse cursor on any of these div tags over here we want to change the background color for that particular div tag that is the navigation bar item so since the div tag is represented with the help of this item class over here i'm going to copy this item class and then we need to provide the hover pseudo class over here for which we want to change the background color so guys we will change the background color to red color in this case when the user gets the mouse cursor on the div tags with the class item so let me just save this file now and let us see the changes so as you can see when we get the mouse cursor over here the background color for the div tags are now getting updated to the red color and this is how the user will be able to get the feedback that he or she will be able to click on that particular navigation bar item now guys you will notice there is certain space on the left hand side and on top of this navigation bar that's because by default certain margin is provided to the body tag over here so simply we will provide the body tag in this case and then let me just provide the margin is equal to auto and also padding is equal to auto and then apart from this we will also provide the box sizing css property as border box over here so guys it is a best practice in order to provide these three lines of code at the start of the css file so that there is no margin and padding that is provided by default to any of the html elements that we are going to define on our web page and then apart from this when we say box sizing equal to border box so any of the padding or the border spaces that are included for the html elements the width and height that is taken by those parameters that is borders and padding will be also included as part of the width and height of the html elements so guys that is one of the important aspect when you are designing your web page so when we save this file now you will notice that there is no space on the left hand side and on top of this particular navigation bar right now so guys if you want to add more 
navigation bar items over here simply you have to come inside the html file and you can simply copy paste these lines of code in this case and then guys simply we can provide some more items as far as navigation bar items are concerned so let's say we provide the contact tab over here and then apart from this we will also provide about us option in this case and let us also provide certain programming languages so over here we can provide java for which i have created a separate playlist if you want to learn more about java tutorial and the java programs as well i have provided the links to the playlist in the description section below apart from this i have also created the playlist for the python programming language so you can watch out those videos as well the links i have given in the description section below so guys when we save this file now if you notice there are more items that are getting displayed over here on the navigation bar so guys in this way we can simply create a navigation bar using the display equal to flex and the other css properties that we have just seen now guys the problem in this particular navigation bar right now is it is a horizontal navigation bar and when we decrease the width of the screen so let's say i have opened the console section over here and when we decrease the width as you can see some of the items are now going on the right hand side and now at the bottom of the screen we are getting the horizontal scroll bar over here guys this is not one of the best practices as far as designing web page is concerned so what we can do is simply we can see what is the maximum width so as you can see over here we are decreasing the width and somewhere over here around 550 pixels the horizontal navigation bar is looking fine in this case and then guys after this when we reduce the size more you can see that it is trying to reduce its size so let's say at around 500 pixels or less we want the navigation bar to be displayed as a vertical navigation bar so guys what we can do is simply we can use the media query over here so how do we do that so inside the style.css file we will use media query in this case so we use media screen over here and after this we use the and keyword and then inside the parenthesis we use the max width in this case so guys we need to provide the max width of 500 pixels and then inside the curly braces what we have to do is since we have provided the display equal to flex for the nav bar over here simply i'm going to copy these lines of code in this case and paste it inside the media screen and then guys we want this nav bar to have the flex direction as column so by default the flex direction is row in this case so simply i'm going to provide the flex direction instead of the other css properties and we are going to change it to column over here so guys whenever the width of the screen is 500 pixels or below the flex direction equal to column will be implemented for that particular nav bar class over here which is the navigation bar so let me just save this file now and when we decrease the width of the screen now so as you can see below 500 pixels the navigation bar is looking like a vertical navigation bar right now so guys in this way we can easily use the media query in order to convert the navigation bar from horizontal to vertical or vice versa and then apart from this we have already implemented the other hover properties and the background color changes as well guys based on your requirements you can provide your own css properties in the same code in this case so comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video in which we are going to create more html and css projects so stay tuned so guys we are going to create this kind of login form over here that is going to have a certain border radius and apart from this it is also going to have some box shadow as well and when we get the mouse cursor on the submit button it is going to increase its size with the help of the scale function that will be used with the help of the transform css property so guys over here let us create the login form folder in this case so simply we are going to create another folder over here inside the html css projects and then guys apart from this inside this login form folder we are going to create two files that is the index.html file and the other file in order to handle the css properties so we will have style.css file as the external css file over here now guys what we will do is simply inside the index.html file we are going to write our html elements so over here inside the title tag we are going to say login form in this case so we are going to create a very simple login form over here and also we are going to link the external style sheet with the help of the link tag over here 
and the href attribute it is equal to style.css file in this case so guys simply we are going to create a form tag over here inside the container class which will be represented by the div tag in this case so guys over here we have the container class with the help of the div tag and then inside this we are going to create a form tag over here also we are going to assign the id for this form tag so over here let us provide the value as form over here now guys simply we are going to have two fields in this case that is username and password so let me just provide the first input with the help of the type that is text over here and simply we are going to have the name as username and id also equal to username over here let us also have couple of line breaks in this case so that the next input that is password can be displayed on the new line so guys over here we have the type is equal to password and simply we are going to have the name and id values as password over here and then again we are going to have the line breaks in this case and then guys after this we are going to have the submit button over here so simply we are going to have the input tag with the type of button in this case and the value must be submit just like how we have in the other forms so guys let me just save this file now and let us click on this go live button so that with the help of the live server extension we are able to see our web page on the web browser and whatever changes we make inside this particular html and the css files will be directly reflected on this particular web page over here so as you can see these are the two input boxes that we have provided and this is the submit button now guys let us provide certain css properties to all these html elements so first of all inside the form what we are going to do is we will have the h2 tag over here and we will say fill below form so guys basically this is the instruction to the user in order to fill the below form in this case also we are going to have certain background color for this div tag which is represented by this container class so let me just copy this class name and inside the style.css file we are going to have the background color over here and let's say we provide the background color as aqua color let me just save this file now so if you notice that this particular color is getting displayed for the div tag which is taking the entire width of the screen so guys we can reduce the width of this particular div tag by providing the width css property and let's say we provide 30 percent as the width in this case so basically we have reduced the width over here also we will provide the padding so let's say we have the padding css property and we provide the value as 20 pixels over here so as you can see we have provided the padding as well and then apart from this let us also get the div tag at the center of the screen by providing the margin is equal to auto and also we will have some margin from the top side as well so let's say we have 20 pixels of margin from the top so as you can see we are getting this div tag that is the container class at the center of the screen now now guys let us say we want all these html elements that is the input fields and the submit button to be present at the center of this particular container so what we can do is simply we can use the text align css property and provide the value as center over here so as you can see all the html elements are now present at the center of this particular container now guys apart from this we will also provide some placeholder over here so that the user comes to know what kind of data is expected over here so inside the input tags we are going to provide the placeholder and then we will say enter username over here for the username input field and also for the password field we are going to provide enter password in this case so let me just save this file now so as you can see we are getting the placeholders over here now guys what we will do is for both these input fields we are also going to provide certain padding in this case so simply we are going to provide the ids that is username and password in this case so since we are going to have the common css properties for both these fields we are going to provide the id and separate them by using the comma in this case so guys over here what we want to do is we want to provide the padding of let's say 5 pixels in this case let me just save this file now so as you can see there is certain spacing when the user provides certain data over here now guys apart from this we will also provide certain css properties to this particular submit button so simply we are going to use the id that is submit over here with the help of the hash character and then let us provide certain background color first of all and it will be the version of the green color so guys let us pick one of the colors in this case so as you can see this is the color that we want over here let me just save this file now and as you can see there is no color that is getting implemented over here that's because we have not provided the id to the submit 
submit button in this case so let us do that as well so simply we are going to provide the id is equal to submit so now if you see there is the color that is getting displayed apart from this we will also provide the padding of let's say five pixels over here and then guys after this also we want some box shadow to be implemented so let's say we provide the border as one pixels solid black color over here so let us provide the black color border in this case so as you can see this is the black color border and also let us provide the border radius as well before the box shadow so we will provide the border radius of 5 pixels so as you can see this is the border radius if i zoom in little bit you can see there is a border radius that can be seen so guys after this what we want to do is also we will provide the box shadow over here so simply we will provide the box shadow and the horizontal and the vertical shadow we want to keep it as 0 pixels but we want to provide the blur effect so let's say we provide the 5 pixels as blur effect and the color must be black in this case let me just save this file now so if you notice there is a box shadow that is getting implemented over here for this particular submit button now guys when we get the mouse cursor over here the cursor icon must be updated to hand in this case so simply we will provide the cursor it is equal to pointer over here so when we save this file now as you can see the cursor is now getting updated to the hand icon over here and also we want it to scale little bit so that the size of this button increases when the user gets the mouse cursor on this particular button so guys what we want to do is simply we need to make use of the hover pseudo class over here so when we say submit followed by colon we have something called as hover pseudo class so in this case simply we can make use of the transform css property which is having scale as one of the function so guys we need to provide the value of a scaling over here so when we provide 1.2 it is going to increase its size against the horizontal and the vertical dimensions so when we save this file now and let us see the changes so as you can see the button size is increasing now and it is due to the scale function that we have used with the help of the transform css property also guys we want a smooth the transition when the scaling is happening so simply we can use the transition css property over here so we will use the transition css property and in this case we want to transform it smoothly so over here we will make use of this transform css property and the time must be let's say 0.3 seconds over here so simply we provide the time as 0.3 seconds when we save this file now and when we get the mouse cursor over here there's a smooth transition that you can see right now as far as the scaling of this button is concerned so guys in this way we have created a simple login form over here instead of providing the string that is field below form we can say login form in this case so as you can see this is the login form now guys similar to the box shadow and the border radius that we have provided to this button over here we can provide the border radius and the box shadow to this container as well so what we will do is inside the style.css file for this container simply we are going to define the border radius of let's say 10 pixels over here so when we save this file now as you can see there is a border radius of 10 pixels right now and also we want a certain box shadow over here so let's say we provide a box shadow with the help of the blur effect over here and we provide the black color as the box shadow so as you can see this is the black color box shadow that is getting provided to this container that is the login form and also we can provide multiple box shadows over here so after providing comma after the first box shadow we can provide the second box shadow that is having 20 pixels of blur effect and let's say we want the dark blue color this time that will be spread across 20 pixels after the border of the container so when we save this file now you will notice that there is a dark blue color that is getting displayed after the border of the container which is giving this particular login form a decent look over here so guys in this way based on your project requirements you can create attractive login forms so that the user can provide the username and password and any other details as per the project requirements so guys comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notification on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video where we are going to create more html and the css projects so stay tuned
So now we are going to create a search bar that will have a glowing effect when the user clicks on this particular search bar over here. So as you can see, we have the border color and also the box shadow CSS property has been implemented over here in order to provide the glowing effect for this particular search box. So let us move to the VS code. So first of all, we will create another folder inside this HTML CSS projects. So basically we will say glowing search bar over here. So guys, we have this folder name inside which we are going to create two more files that is index.html and the style.css files. So guys, we have the index.html file over here and the other file that is style.css that will help us to provide the CSS properties. Now guys, inside this index.html file, we are going to create the HTML element so let us provide the title of this particular web page so basically we are going to say glowing search bar in this case and then after this we are going to link the style.css file with the help of this link tag over here and the rel attribute will be style sheet and the href attribute will be style.css file now guys inside the body tag what we are going to do is let us first of all have the div tag with the class container over here inside which we are going to define the input with the type search in this case so guys basically this is the input with the type search that will help us in order to create a search bar so we are going to have the value as search for the name and the id attribute over here and apart from this we are also going to provide the placeholder for this input field and we will provide the value as for your search so guys basically this is the placeholder text that will be displayed inside the search bar let me just save this file now and let us open the live server in this case with the help of the go live button that you can see so guys basically this is the search bar that we have created now guys let us provide certain css properties for this search bar and the container class as well which is represented by the dev tag over here so first of all we will have the container class in this case and also we will have certain background color so let's say we have the white version of the background color over here so simply we are going to provide the white color in this case and let us have this particular shade of white color over here let me just save this file now as you can see this is the shade of the white color it is a kind of grayish color that is set as the background color for the container we will also have certain padding over here so let's say we have a padding of 20 pixels and also we will set the text align as center so that we can see the search bar at the center of this particular container so as you can see this is the search bar that is getting displayed over here now guys what we want to do is when the user gets the mouse cursor over here inside the search bar and clicks on it we want to have a glowing effect outside of this particular border of the search bar so simply we are going to provide certain css properties to this search bar first of all so we will use the id that is search in this case so we have to use the hash character followed by search over here so basically we are going to increase the padding so let's say we provide the padding of 5 pixels over here so as you can see there is certain spacing that is provided inside the search bar over here now guys when we get the mouse cursor over here we need to make use of the focus pseudo class in this case so simply i'm going to copy paste this line of code over here we are going to remove this padding css property and we will say focus that is the pseudo class with the help of this colon over here and then after this we need to make the border color so let's say we have the border of two pixels and it is of the type solid and we will provide some blue version of the border color over here so simply we are going to provide a blue color in this case and let us change the color to light blue over here and let's say this is the color that we want to have as the border so let me just save this file now and now when we get the mouse cursor over here you will not be able to see any changes over here that's because there is a default outline that is getting displayed right now so guys what we can do is simply we can provide outline it is equal to none in this case when we save this file now as you can see there is a blue color border that is getting displayed over here right now let us change the background color of this container to some darker version so let's say we have the black color for this background color over here so that we we can properly see the border color of this particular search bar so when we save this file now 
there is no change right now so as you can see we have not provided the semicolon over here so guys it is very important that we provide the semicolon after the values of the css properties so as you can see now we have the border color that is light blue color for this particular search bar now guys what we can do is simply we can also provide the box shadow over here with the same color so we are going to provide the box shadow of let's say zero pixels horizontal and the vertical shadow in this case and let's say we provide 20 pixels of the same color as the blur effect for the box shadow so i'll just copy paste this particular rgb color over here let me just save this file now and now when we get the mouse cursor inside this particular search bar and click on it you can see that there is a glowing effect that can be seen over here due to this box shadow and the border that we have provided in this case for this particular search bar so guys in this way you can provide the glowing effect for the search bar with the help of these css properties apart from this we can also have the border radius as well so let's say we have the radius of 10 pixels so you can see that there is a radius that is getting provided over here and when we click on the search bar you can see that there is a glowing effect that can be seen over here so guys comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video where we are going to create more html and the css projects so stay tuned so now we are going to create a simple loading animation that will look like this as you can see this is a circular loading animation and we can display this loading animation with the help of just html and css whenever you are retrieving data to be displayed to the user so guys let us move to the vs code so guys over here inside the html css projects folder we are going to create new folder over here and we will say loading animation in this case and inside this folder we are going to create couple of files over here so the first file will be index.html file and the other file will be representing the css file that is style.css file so guys basically we are going to make use of this external css file over here so inside our html file in this case we are going to make use of this particular emit abbreviation that is exclamation mark in this case that will help us in order to create this particular html template in order to create the web page so guys over here for the title tag we are going to provide the string that is loading animation over here and also we are going to link this external style.css file over here with the help of the link tag inside the html file so guys after this inside the body tag what we are going to do is simply we are going to create a diff tag with the class that is loading over here so guys basically this diff tag will help us in order to create the loading animation on the web page so let us provide certain css properties to this diff tag over here we are going to make use of this class name that is loading and inside the style.css file we will provide the dot character followed by the name of this class now guys what we will do is simply we are going to provide a fixed width and height for this particular diff tag so let's say we have 200 pixels of width and 200 pixels of height over here so basically it is a square box initially and apart from this we are also going to provide the background color so let's say we provide the gray color as the background color and then guys for the body part as well we are going to provide certain dark color as the background color so we make use of this body tag and inside the curly braces we will provide the background color and let's say we provide the black color as the background color over here let me just save this file now and let us make use of this live server so simply we have to click on this go live in this case so guys as you can see we have the black color as the background color over here and we have created the dev tag successfully that is in the form of a square box in this case let us get the square box at the center of the page over here so what we will do is inside the style.css file for the loading class simply we are going to provide the margin it is equal to auto and then apart from this from top as well we are going to create certain margin so let us provide the 20 pixels of margin from top let me just save this file now 
and if we see on the web page right now the div tag is at the center of the screen over here now guys since we want a loading animation out of this div tag first of all we will have to convert the square box to a circle so what we will do is simply we can make use of the border radius css property and when we provide the border radius as 50 percent the square shape will be converted to circular shape over here so let me just save this file now and as you can see on the web page there is a circle that is getting created over here now guys instead of using the background color that is coloring this circle as a gray color we will make use of the border color over here so let me just comment out this background color in this case and simply we will provide the border of let's say 20 pixels and the border type will be solid in this case and the same color that is gray color we are going to provide for this particular border when we save this file now so as you can see we have created a circular shape div tag over here now guys on one side we want the border color to be white color so let's say on the top side we want the border color to be white color so that we can see the loading icon out of this div tag so what we have to do is we need to separate out these values that we have provided inside the border css property so i'm going to comment out this line of code and we are going to separate it in such a way that we have to provide all these values separately so first of all we will provide the border width over here of same value that is 20 pixels and then the border style must be solid in this case so we provide border style css property and it is of the type solid and the border color must be gray so simply we make use of this border color css property now guys when we provide the value for this border color the first color will represent the top color over here followed by the right color and then we have the bottom color and then we have the left color in this case so the first color that we want to provide is white color that will be provided at the top side of the border for this particular circular shape div tag and then after this on the right hand side we want the gray color and then on the bottom side we again want the gray color and on the left side as well we want the gray color over here so guys basically only the top side must be white in this case so that we can see the loading icon so when we save this file now as you can see there is a border color of white color at the top of this particular circle now guys simply in order to make this circle look like a loading animation we need to rotate it by 360 degrees and we have to continue the rotation so what we can do is we can make use of the keyframes over here which is very important when you make any of the animations inside the css so guys we make use of at the rate character followed by keyframes keyword over here and then followed by the space character and then simply let us give the name to this animation that is loading over here and then after this we need to provide the curly braces now guys we need to define the different stages of the loading so let's say at the zero percent which is at the start of the loading we don't want any rotation so simply we can provide the transform css property and inside this we are going to make use of this rotate function which is going to have the value as zero degrees over here so at zero percent we don't want any rotation now guys similarly at hundred percent that is at the end of the animation we want the rotation to be 360 degree which means this particular circle should start from the zero degree and then at the end of the animation it should be completely rotated by 360 degrees over here so for hundred percent in this case we need to provide transform css property once again and then we need to make use of the rotate function and simply we provide the value that is 360 degree over here so guys in this way from zero percent to hundred percent we have provided the different animations you can also provide the animations to the intermediate percentages that is 10 percent 25 percent or 50 percent and so on based on your animation requirements so guys in this case currently we only want to rotate this particular icon and that is why we have provided the transform css property with the help of the rotate function over here let me just save this file now and you will not see any changes right now on this web page that's because we have to link this particular keyframes that is loading with this particular dev tag that is having the class name that is loading over here so what we can do is inside this loading class you can make use of the animation name css property and in this case we need to make use of this name that is loading over here and then after this we also have to provide the animation duration so let's say we want the duration to be two seconds so within two 
2 seconds the icon will rotate itself from 0 degrees to 360 degrees over here and then after this we want to rotate it infinite number of times so basically we make use of this animation iteration count over here and we provide the value that is infinite in this case let me just save this file now and if you see the web page as you can see in 2 seconds the icon is getting rotated over here and in this way we can easily create the loading animation now guys you can see that the speed is decreasing at the end of the animation so simply we can make use of another css property that is animation timing function in order to keep the speed linear over here so simply we provide the value that is linear in this case that will keep the speed of the loading animation same throughout the animation so when we save this file now you will see that the speed is linear right now and there is no decrease or increase in the speed as far as the loading animation is concerned so guys based on your requirements you can have the different color for this particular loading animation that will match along with the background color of this particular web page and then based on the javascript code once your data is successfully retrieved from the database or from the internet you can hide this particular loading animation it becomes very important in order to keep your users engaged with the help of such animations on the web page whenever you are retrieving data with the help of javascript so guys this is one of the ways in order to create the loading animation on your web page with the help of the html and the css comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to the channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video with a different html and the css project so stay tuned so guys we are going to create these social media icons that will help your users on the website to share the url to the different social media platforms and when the user gets the mouse cursor on these social media icons they are going to scale up little bit and that is how you can provide a good user experience for your users so guys let us move to the vs code so let us create another folder over here since it is the sixth project we are naming it as 06 underscore and then we will say social media icons in this case and then guys inside this folder let us create two files that is index.html file which will help us in order to create the web page and then apart from this we will also create the style.css file that will help us in order to provide the different css properties now guys over here inside the index.html file let us create the html template over here and for the title part we will say social media icons so guys basically this is the title and then we are going to link the style.css file by using this link colon css emit abbreviation and then we are going to provide href it is equal to style.css now guys apart from this in order to create the social media icons we can include the external style sheet over here so as you can see we are going to make use of this box icons.com web website which helps us in order to provide the different icons and basically we are going to make use of this style sheet so let me just copy this link i will provide both these links in the description section below so guys over here after copying the external css file we are going to paste it inside the head section of the body tag over here so basically this is the link that is going to be used in order to make use of the different icons that are present on the website so guys over here what we will do is first of all we will create a div tag with the class container over here inside which we will have different social media icons and then in this case we are going to have the a tag so over here we have the a tag in this case and let me just provide the class as link in this case and then after this inside the a tag we can have the i tag now guys how you can display the links over here so let us open this website that is boxicons.com so basically this is the website that we are going to use and then you can see that there are different icons you can provide on your web page so guys over here let's say first of all we want the facebook icon so the moment you search for facebook you can see different social media icons that can be used on your web page so let's say we want to make use of this particular icon so when we click on this additional information will be provided on the right hand side we need to switch to the font section over here and as you can see this is the link that is provided so let me just zoom in little bit so that you can see properly so basically this is the font and this is the tag that we are supposed to include 
include so let me just click on this and basically it will get copied on the clipboard so over here inside the a tag we are supposed to provide this i tag over here that we have copied and basically it is having the class with this particular value so guys what this will do is it will display the icon on the web page so let us check this on the web browser let me just save this file now and let us open the live server over here by clicking on this go live button so as you can see this is the icon that is getting displayed over here on the top left now guys similarly what we will do is we will make use of the other icons as well from that same website so let me just copy paste these lines of code over here and simply instead of facebook we are going to make use of the other social media icons so we have twitter over here and then we also have youtube in this case and then let's say we have instagram as well so over here we provide the instagram so basically you just need to change the class name in this case you can also come over here on the box icons website and then you can provide the icon that you want to display so let's say you want to search for youtube over here so youtube icon will be displayed and then simply you can copy paste this i tag from this particular website so guys basically we have included four icons over here let us add another one that is snapchat as well so instead of instagram we will say snapchat in this case it is best practice to copy this i tag from this website so that you don't get any issues while you are renaming the class names over here so guys let me just save this file now and when we see the same web page over here as you can see these are all the icons that are getting displayed in this case now guys since we have included all the social media icons inside the a tag that is why we are getting the underline and all of them are having the color that is blue color in this case so what we will have to do is we will provide the css properties for all these classes that we have provided over here so first of all let us copy this container class in this case and then let's provide some css properties over here to the container class so first of all we will say display it is equal to flex and then we want to get it at the middle of the screen so let's say we provide justify content as center over here let me just save this file now as you can see all the icons are now getting displayed at the center of this page as far as horizontal alignment is concerned now guys let us also provide certain margin from top so that we have some spacing from top of the page as well so we provide 50 pixels of margin from top over here here. Now guys let us provide certain CSS properties to this link class as well so that the properties will be applied to the icons. So over here we provide dot followed by the class name that is link in this case and then what we will do is first of all we will provide the width and height for this particular link class. So let's say we have the width of 30 pixels over here and also we will provide the height of 30 pixels in this case so that we get a square box out of this link class over here and also we want to make this link as a circular shape length so what we will do is simply we will say border radius it is equal to 50 percent in this case and let us temporarily give some background color over here so that we can identify the area of this class that is link so let me just save this file now so if you notice we have all these circular shaped link over here now guys inside this circles we want all these icons to be present at the center of the circle so what we will do is again we will say display it is equal to flex this time and then we will say justify content it is equal to center so that they are at the center as far as the horizontal alignment is concerned and then we will get them at the center as far as vertical alignment is concerned so we have to make use of the align items over here and again we will make use of the center value so as you can see all the icons are now at the center of the circle in this case now guys we will have to remove the underlines that are coming over here so simply we will say text decoration it is equal to none and also we will change the font color over here so let's say we provide the color as white color in this case so simply we provide the color as white we need to have certain dark background color in this case so what we will do is let's say we provide the dark background color that is black this time so when we save this file so as you can see the background color of the circle is black in color and the icons are displayed as white in color now guys apart from this we will also have to provide certain spacing in between all the links so let us provide the margin for all the links over here so we simply have to provide the margins here CSS property and let's say we provide 10 pixels of space from all the sides so when we save this file now as you can see all the icons are now separated with certain space in between them now guys instead of giving the black color as the background color over here we need to provide the colors that are actually present on these websites of the social media icons so what we will do is simply we will comment out this line of code that is background color over here and we will provide the inline style property in this case so basically inside the a tag which is having 
sharing the class link over here since all the links will be having different background colors so we are going to provide the style attribute in this case and let us provide the background color css property and the facebook social media icon is having some version of blue color over here so let us set that as well so this version of blue we have set already so let me just save this file now and you can see that facebook is now having the blue color as the background color over here the other icons are not visible right now because their color is white in color and the background color is also white in color for now so guys let us set the background color for the other social media icons as well so i'll quickly make the changes over here so as you can see we have provided the background colors for all the links over here apart from this for the social media icons that is instagram and snapchat we have provided the icon color as black so that it matches well with the light color background over here so let me just save this file now and when we see this page on the web browser as you can see this is the way that the icons are getting displayed over here which is giving it a decent look after we have provided the background colors for the icons and having the background as a circular shape now guys when we hover over this particular social icons we want to scale the icons to some extent so what we will do is simply inside the style.css file over here let me just provide the link class in this case and then we will provide the hover pseudo class over here and simply we will say transform in this case and then we will say scale by 1.2 that is the measure by which we want to scale the icon let me just save this file now and now when we get the mouse cursor over here as you can see the social media icons are increasing its size along with the background over here now if we want the smooth transition what we will do is simply inside the link class over here we will provide transition it is equal to all so that whatever changes happen to the link class all of them will have the transition and then apart from this we will have to provide certain timing so let's say we want 0.5 seconds during which the transition will complete so let me just save this file now and now if you see the transition as you can see it is a smooth transition which is helping the icon to increase its size along with the background that we have provided so guys in this way we can create the horizontal social media icons that can help the users in order to share your link on the different social platforms that they are using now guys apart from this since we have provided the display it is equal to flex value and by default the flex direction is horizontal in this case that is the row direction over here if you want the social media icons to be displayed in the vertical direction simply what you have to do is inside the container after display is equal to flex you can provide flex direction over here by default it is row but this time we can make it as column so that all the items are getting displayed in the vertical direction so when we save this file now and view this page on the web browser as you can see these are the social media icons that are getting displayed in the vertical direction over here so guys in this way you can change the direction of the icons that are getting displayed based on your project requirements so guys comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video in which we are going to create more html and css projects so stay tuned so now we will create a button animation and this is the button that is getting displayed over here and when we get the mouse cursor on this button as you can see this is the animation that we are going to create just with the help of plain html and the css properties so guys let us move to the vs code so let us create a new folder inside the html css projects so over here we will create the folder and we will name it as 07 and then we will say button animation in this case so guys basically this is the new folder that we have created inside this we will create our html and the css files so we have index.html file and the style.css file as well so guys basically we have both these files over here now inside the index.html file we will make use of this emmet abbreviation that is exclamation mark and when we press enter as you can see we have this html template that is getting generated so over here for the title part simply we will say button animation this time and then after the title we will link the style.css file that we have created using this link colon css emmet abbreviation so guys basically we have to set the href it is equal to the name of the file that is style.css file over here now guys inside the body tag what we have to do is we will make use of the a tag that is 
is the anchor tag over here and we will have the class name that is button in this case so guys basically we are going to convert this a tag into a button and we will have the animation inside the button over here so guys we have set the text as over me in this case so guys let me just save this file now and let us start the live server over here from the bottom right so as you can see this is the link that is getting displayed that is having the text over me in this case now guys let us provide certain css properties to this a tag so that we can convert this link into a button so guys over here inside the style.css file first of all we will have the body tag over here so that we can have the button tag at the center of the screen so that we can get this a tag at the center of the screen in this case so let me just provide the display it is equal to flex and then simply we will say justify content it is equal to center let me just save this file now so as you can see we are getting the link at the center of the screen over here apart from this we will also provide align items it is equal to center in this case so as you can see we are getting the link at the center of the page as far as the horizontal alignment is concerned now guys what we will do is simply we will provide certain css properties to this button class over here let me just rename this class name to btn because the button keyword is also reserved for the button tag in this case let me just rename this class name to btn so that we don't get confused with the button tag inside html so guys over here we are going to make use of this class that is btn so inside the style.css file we have the dot character followed by the btn now guys over here first of all let us provide the padding of 10 pixels from top and bottom and 20 pixels from left and right in this case also we will have certain border over here so let's say we have two pixels of border which is of the type solid this time and then we will have the color that is 764 abc as far as the hex color is concerned so guys this is the color that we are going to use in order to have the border color and also the text color must be the same color so guys it is a best practice in order to copy this value of the hex color and save it inside a variable so guys over here inside the body tag we will create a variable that is button color over here so guys basically we have this button color variable and let us provide this hex color this time so basically this is the variable that we can use anywhere we want to make use of this color inside the body tag so guys over here simply we have to make use of the where function and inside the where function we will make use of this variable that we have defined that is button color over here remember that we have to provide two times hyphen while using the variable and also while declaring the variable over here either inside the root selector or the body selector so let me just save this file now and let us see the border over here so as you can see we are getting the border that is of the two pixels solid type this time now guys this text color should also have the same border color over here so what we will do is simply we will say color it is equal to where function and then we will make use of this variable so let me just save this file now so as you can see both the colors are same now and then apart from this what we will do is simply we will remove the underline by using the text decoration it is equal to none and also we will provide certain border radius so that we get a good corners for this particular button so simply we will have the border radius of 20 pixels let me just save this file now so as you can see the link is now converted to a button that is getting displayed over here apart from this let us also provide certain margin from top so that we have certain spacing from top so we have provided the 50 pixels margin from top of this button now guys let us create the animation inside this button over here and before that simply if you want to change the color of the button you can simply come over here and make changes to this color so let's say we want to change it to some green color over here so when we change this color to green let's say we are using this particular color let me just save this file now so as you can see the button border is now converted to green color along with it the text is also changed to green color over here so guys this is the way that you can make use of the variables and simply you can make the changes at one location so that the changes are applied at all the locations wherever you have used that particular variable so as you can see this is the color that we are using now guys apart from this what we have to do is we have to create a rectangular shape element on this web page so that we can create the animation for this button when we get the mouse cursor on this particular button so simply we will make use of this button class over here and we can make use of the pseudo element that is before so guys basically this before and after pseudo elements will help us in order to create new html elements without having to provide those html elements inside the html page so guys let us check that how we can do it with the help of the before pseudo element so over here we have made use of this button class which is representing this 
a tag over here always remember that if you want to create the new html elements by using the before or the after pseudo element you can do so only for the container tags you cannot do it for the tags which are not containers so let's say if you have the input tag which is not a container tag you cannot make use of the before and after pseudo elements in order to add new html elements so guys inside the curly braces first of all we have to make use of the content css property and simply we will keep it as blank over here that is double quotes in this case now guys apart from this we also have to make use of the position css property it must be absolute so guys whenever we are making use of this position equal to absolute css property we need to have the container so currently the container is button class over here and we have to make the position as relative for this parent container this time so over here we set the position as relative and then for the position equal to absolute we can provide the top left bottom or right css properties so where do we want this box to occur exactly over here at the top left corner of the button so simply we will say top it is equal to zero and also left it is equal to zero so that the top left corner of this particular new element is aligned over here at the top left of the button now guys apart from this we also want this element to have the width equal to 100 percent which should cover the entire button and also the height of 100 percent over here so simply we will say width it is equal to 100 percent and also the height css property as 100 percent this time and then apart from this let us also have certain background color so simply we will make use of the same color by using the where function and then we will use this button color over here let me just save this file now and now if you see on the web page there is a square box that is covering the entire button over here now guys this particular square box is present on top of the button that we had already created so basically if we don't provide the top and left css property over here let us see what happens so we have commented out these lines of code let me just save this file now as you can see it is getting placed somewhere over here and not exactly at top of the button which is behind this particular rectangular box and then guys we also want this rectangular box to be present behind the button so what we can do is simply we will set the z index css property to minus one over here so that it goes behind the current button that is already present on the web page so when we save this file now it has gone behind the button over here and since the text color is also having that variable we are not able to make it out because the text color of the hover me text is also having the same color over here what we will do is instead of having this color simply we will set the color as white this time so when we say color it is equal to white you will be able to see the hover me text which means the button is now at the top of the rectangular box and when we remove the z index over here which is minus one now the rectangle shape is on the top of the button so guys this is the way that you can make the rectangular box that you have created by using this before pseudo element go behind the button this time so guys when we save this file now so basically this particular rectangular box is present behind the button right now and then guys what we will do is simply i'll remove this color over here and uncomment this line of code and also we want the top and left to be zero so that the box comes exactly on top of the button so let us remove these comments over here and then let me just save this file now so as you can see the box is exactly at the top of the button now guys we want to move this box on the left hand side and when we get the mouse cursor on this button over here the box should come behind the button so that we can see the cool animation so what we will do is we will make use of the transform css property and then we will say translate x this time so guys basically this will help us in order to move the box and we will say negative 100 percent this time so let me just save this file now so as you can see the box has moved to the left right now and when we get the mouse cursor over here the box should come behind this particular button so simply what we can do is we can make use of the hover pseudo class over here so guys basically we will make use of this button class over here and on hover event which means we make use of this hover class we want this portion that is before portion over here to come on the right hand side so simply after the hover pseudo class we will make use of the before pseudo element over here in this way and then after this what we have to do is the before element should move on the right so simply we will say transform and then we will say translate x it should go to the original position which is zeroth position over here for the x coordinate so when we say zero let me just save this file now and when we get the mouse cursor now on the button as you can see the rectangular shape element is now coming behind the button over here now guys we want the smooth transition this time so simply what we will do is we will say transform
transition CSS property over here for the button class. We will say all and then we will say one second as the timing and the same line of code should be present for the before element as well for the button class. So over here we have provided the transition all it is equal to one second. Now guys whatever changes happen to the button or the rectangular element over here it will happen with a transition of one second. So when we save this file now and now when we get the mouse cursor over here as you can see there's a transition of one second that we can see. Now guys we also want to hide this rectangular element before we get the mouse cursor over here on the button. So what we can do is simply inside the button class we will say overflow CSS property it must be hidden. So guys whatever elements are present outside of the border of this particular button class will be hidden by default. So let me just save this file now. So as you can see there is no element that can be seen and when we get the mouse cursor over here as you can see this is the way that the animation is happening. Now guys when the element covers the button we want to change the text of the hover me that is present over here to white color. So what we can do is simply we will say button class and then we will have the hover pseudo class over here and then we will have the color it is equal to white color. Let me just save this file now and now when we get the mouse cursor over here as you can see there is a smooth transition that is happening and the color of the hover me text is also getting converted to white color in this case. So guys in this way you can create a cool animation over here with the help of the HTML and the CSS properties. Now guys if you want to change the color of the button simply as I have told you you can come to this variable and then change the color. So let's say we want some version of the green color over here so let's set the color to green color this time and when we save this file now as you can see this is the button that is getting displayed on the web page and when we get the mouse cursor over here you can see the cool button animation that is happening. So guys in this way you can set the required color based on your requirements as per the project. So guys comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video. Please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to the channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well. I'll see you in the next video in which we are going to create more HTML and CSS projects. So stay tuned. So now we are going to create a card hover animation over here. So basically we are going to create the simple card along with some box shadow over here. And when the user gets the mouse cursor on this card, as you can see on the right hand side, we are going to animate certain HTML elements with the help of the pseudo elements that we will define inside the external style sheet using the CSS properties. So guys, basically this is the card hover animation that we are going to create. So guys, let us move to the VS code. So now we will create a new folder inside HTML CSS projects. So in this case, we are going to create 08 underscore and then card hover animation as the name of the folder. And then guys inside this, we are going to create two files that is the index.html file and the style.css file as well. So guys, basically we have both these files inside the card hover animation folder and then inside the HTML file, we are going to make use of this Emmet abbreviation in order to generate this HTML template. So guys, inside the title tag, we are going to say card hover animation as the title of the page and we are going to link this style.css file as the external style sheet over here by using the link colon CSS Emmet abbreviation. So guys basically for the href attribute we have to provide the external style sheet as you can see. Now guys inside the body tag we are going to create the div tag with the class container. So basically we have the class over here for the div tag and inside this div we are going to create another div tag over here and then simply we are going to have the class name that is card and then inside this div tag we are going to have two more div tags first of all we will have the div tag with the class name over here so for this we are going to set the name as programming for beginners that is the name of this youtube channel that you should definitely subscribe if you have not done so and then apart from this we are going to have another div tag with the class role over here and then for this div tag we are going to say youtuber and coder over here so guys basically we have these two statements inside the div tags let me just save this file now and let us see how the changes look like on the browser so we are going to run this live server over here so these are the two statements that are getting displayed over here now guys we are going to provide certain css properties in this case so first of all for the container class let us define certain css properties over here so guys let us provide the width in this case so let's say we have 250 pixels of width and also a height over here so basically we will provide the height 
height of 600 pixels this time apart from this we will also provide the white color as the background color over here let us change the version of the white color this time and let us provide this grayish color as the background color for this particular container class let me just save this file now so as you can see this is the container that is getting displayed let us adjust the height in this case so that we can see the card properly on the screen so we have provided the width of 200 pixels and the height of 300 pixels over here and this is how the card will look like now guys what we will do is we want to get this card at the center of the screen over here so simply we will provide margin as auto value this time so when we save this file as you can see the card is now present at the center of the screen apart from this we will also provide certain css properties to the card class that is present inside the container so guys what we can do is we can simply provide the card class name over here and also we will set the width and height as 100 percent so that the card class takes the entire width and height of the container class over here and then apart from this we will also provide display it is equal to flex and we will say justify content as center so that we are able to get this text at the center of this particular container so when we save this file now as you can see we are getting programming for beginners and then youtuber and coder over here guys by default the flex direction is row over here so what we have to do is we need to make the flex direction as column so that both these strings are displayed vertically so guys over here we will say flex direction it is equal to column let me just save this file now so as you can see now both the text are now present at the center of the container as far as vertical alignment is concerned apart from this we will also provide text align it is equal to center so that we get them at the center of the container as far as horizontal alignment is concerned apart from this let us also provide certain border radius over here for the container class so let's say we have the border radius this time of 20 pixels and also we will provide the box shadow over here so we will provide the blur effect with the color that is black in this case so guys basically we have zero pixels of horizontal and vertical box shadow and we are providing the blur effect of 20 pixels with the black color when we save this file now as you can see it is giving the shadow over here for this particular card let us also adjust the background color over here to some extent so that it looks more decent so as you can see it is now looking more decent over here after adjusting the background color guys as per your requirements you can provide your own background color based on the project requirements now guys apart from this we will make use of the before and after pseudo elements in order to create more html elements over here that will help us in order to provide the over animation so what we will do is for the card class we are going to create the before pseudo element so in this case we make use of the card class followed by two times colon and then we will say before pseudo element and then guys over here what we have to do is first of all we will have to provide the content it is equal to blank so we provide two times double string over here and then apart from this we also have to set the position it is equal to absolute now guys since we are making the position equal to absolute over here we need to make the position equal to relative for this particular card class so over here we will provide the position it is equal to relative this time and now since we have provided the position equal to absolute for this before pseudo element we can simply provide the top css property as zero and also the left css property as zero so that this new element starts from the top left corner of this particular card and then apart from this we will also set the width as 100 percent over here and also the height as 100 percent so that it takes the entire width and height of the card in this case now guys apart from this let us also provide the background color over here so we will provide a blue version of the background color this time and let us set this lighter blue version as the background color for this before element when we save this file now as you can see the entire card is now getting covered with the help of this before pseudo element now guys apart from this what we have to do is we will provide the transform css property as well in which case we are going to provide the skew over here so we are going to provide the skew by 30 degrees so when we save this file now as you can see this is the 
skew CSS property that is applied on this particular pseudo element and let us also translate it to the right hand side so basically for this transform CSS property after the skew function that we have provided we can simply provide the translate function as well so we will provide translate x and we will move it by 50% over here when we save this file now as you can see we have moved it by 50% let us move it by 100% over here and see how it looks like so in this case we have moved it to 100% this time so guys in this way we have provided one of the HTML elements by using the before pseudo element which is part of this particular card class over here now guys let me just adjust the background color for the pseudo element to this particular blue version of the color so as you can see this is the pseudo element that is getting generated over here now guys similarly we will have another the HTML element with the help of the after pseudo element over here so simply I'm going to copy paste these lines of code over here and instead of having before we will say after this time and all the CSS properties will be same except the skew for which we have to provide a negative 30 degrees so that it is opposite to the one that we have already created so when we save this file now as you can see this is the way that the after element is also getting created over here now guys the portion that is going outside of this particular card we want to hide it so simply what we can do is for this container we can again provide the position it is equal to relative again since it is a container and simply we will say overflow it is equal to hidden so that whatever HTML is outside of the boundary of the container it will be hidden so when we save this file now the portion of the pseudo elements that we had created which was going outside of the card is now hidden this time now guys apart from this we will also provide certain opacity as well to both these pseudo elements so over here we will provide the opacity css property and let's say we provide the opacity it is equal to 0.7 so that we have certain kind of transparency which can be used in order to display this text when we get the pseudo elements at the center of this card during the card over animation so guys we have provided the opacity as well of 0.7 for both these cards now guys similarly we will create the before and after pseudo elements for this container class as well but this time we will make changes as far as translate x is concerned so over here simply i'm going to copy paste these lines of code once again and instead of the dot card over here we will have dot container this time for both before and the after pseudo elements and then we are going to keep all the css properties same over here except the translate x this time in which case we are going to make it as 85 percent over here so guys basically the translate x for both that is before and after pseudo elements will be 85 percent this time when we save this file now as you can see we have another layer of the same pseudo elements that is getting displayed over here now guys apart from this we can also provide certain box shadow for the pseudo elements that we had created previously so that we can see them properly over here so inside this card class with the before element simply we are going to provide the box shadow this time and then we will have the 10 pixels of box shadow and we will have the color as blue so let us see how it looks like when we save this file now as you can see this is the box shadow that is getting appeared over here similarly we are going to have the box shadow for the after pseudo element as well so when we save this file now as you can see over here we are getting the box shadow this time now guys when we get the mouse cursor on this card we want the pseudo elements to come towards the left hand side over here so what we can do is simply on hover event we can change the translate x css property so guys over here first of all for the card class we are going to define the hover pseudo class over here and then after this we want to change the translate x property for the pseudo element over here so guys simply for the card class in this case we are going to make use of the hover class over here and then we are going to make use of the pseudo element that is before and then what we have to do is we will simply say transform and then we can say translate this time and we will have translate x and it should come to 50 percent over here so guys basically we are moving the before pseudo element by 50 percent on left hand side and then guys similarly for the after pseudo element as well we want the same transformation so we provide comma and then we provide the after pseudo element over here so basically as you can see the skew is getting removed over here so simply what we can do is we can also provide the skew as well so we need to provide it separately so over here we have provided the translate x it is equal to 50 percent and also we will keep the skew as 30 
degree degrees over here and then apart from this for the after pseudo element as well we will again translate it by 50 percent and the skew this time must be negative 30 degrees so over here we can provide the negative 30 degrees as the skew parameter so guys when we get the mouse cursor over here as you can see it is moving now towards the left but guys basically we want the smooth transition as well so what we will do is we have to provide the transition css property to all these pseudo elements so basically we will say transition all and then we will provide 0.5 seconds over here and simply i'm going to copy paste these lines of code for all the pseudo elements so that we have the transition that is smooth this time and then apart from this let us also increase the translate x so that it doesn't go towards the extreme left of the card so basically we are going to keep it as 80 percent over here for both these pseudo elements this time so when we save this file now as you can see this is the way that the transition is happening over here similarly we will provide the transition for the container pseudo elements that is before and after so instead of having the class we will simply say container over here and then we will provide the translate x this time it should be 65 percent over here so when we say 65 so that there is a gap of 15 percent between the pseudo elements of both that is the card class and the container class as well so when we get the mouse cursor over here as you can see we are getting the animation for this particular card over here so guys basically we have the issue over here when we get the mouse cursor on this particular particular pseudo element the other pseudo element is going back to its original position so in order to solve that we can simply provide the container over class for all these transformations that we have provided so let me change that quickly over here so guys as you can see we have the hover pseudo class for the container class over here and then after that we have provided the before and after pseudo element for the card class and also the before and after pseudo element for the container class as well so when we save this file now now you can see that all the elements are now coming together as far as the animation is concerned so guys in this way you can create the simple card hover animation over here based on your requirements you can change the colors as well and then apart from this we can also make some changes to the text that is getting displayed over here so we can also provide certain scaling as far as the transformation of this text is concerned when the user gets the mouse cursor on these cards over here so guys comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to the channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video in which we are going to create more html and css projects so stay tuned so now we are going to display these analytics icons as you can see this is the like or the heart icon and then we have the comment icon as well and then we have the share icon as well and when the user gets the mouse cursor over here on these icons they are going to scale themselves by 1.5 times so guys let us move to vs code so guys let us create another folder over here inside the html css projects folder so in this case we are going to have the folder name as analytics data so guys basically we have this new folder over here inside which we are going to create the index.html file and the style.css file as well so now we have created both the files over here now inside Inside the index.html file we are going to quickly create the html document and we have the title that is analytics data for instagram so guys simply we are going to have three icons over here in order to have the like button comment button and the share button in this case now apart from this we will also link the external style sheet that is style.css file with the help of the link tag over here and the href it is equal to style.css now guys inside the body tag over here simply we are going to have the div tag with the class container this time and then inside this we are going to have the a tag first of all so basically we make use of this a tag inside which we are going to make use of the box icon so guys basically in order to make use of the icons you can simply use the boxicons.com website where you will find the css link over here so simply i'm going to copy this particular link i will provide both these links in the description section below so let me just copy this link and paste it under the head section of the html file so guys basically this is the url from where the icons will be referenced and will be displayed on the web page wherever we are going to make use of the box icons now guys after this we have to go to the website that is boxicons.com so simply let me just open this website on the browser so guys over here this is the boxicons website 
now over here simply you can search for the different icons so the first icon that we want to use is the heart icon this time so simply we have searched for heart and when we press enter as you can see this is the icon that we want to use you can use any of the icons based on your project requirements now guys we will click on this particular icon and as you can see on the right hand side we have to go to this font option and then we have this i tag over here with the class name so guys basically this class is used in order to refer to this particular icon from the box icons website so let me just copy this i tag over here inside the a tag and then after this we will also have the span tag over here and simply we will have the class as data for the span tag and then we will have the content as 60 over here so we can have any dummy data over here in order to show the count of the hearts and then apart from this let me just copy paste these lines of code that is the links multiple times over here instead of heart in this case we are going to have the other icons that is comment and the share button so over here we search for comment and basically this is the comment that we want to show on the web page so when we click on this we are going to copy this particular i tag and similarly let me copy the i tag for the share icon as well so guys over here as you can see we have the i tags with the different class names that will help us in order to display the icons on the web page now guys let me just save this file now and let us start the live server over here so guys as you can see these are the three icons that we have displayed on the web page so guys now we will provide certain css properties to the these classes that we have defined inside the HTML file. So inside the style.css file for the container class, let us provide certain background color over here. And this time we will provide the white version of the background color over here. So guys, basically we will set this particular background color this time. And also we will provide the padding. So let's say from top and bottom, we want 10 pixels of padding. And from left and right, we want 20 pixels of padding. Let me just save this file now. As you can see, this is the div tag that is getting displayed over here. Now guys, apart from this, we will also set the width as well. So let's say we provide the width of 30% over here. When we save this file, as you can see, this is the div that is getting displayed. And then after this, also we will make the display it is equal to flex and also we will set the justify content it is equal to center so that all the icons are displayed at the center as far as the horizontal alignment is concerned now guys you can see that there is no spacing in between these icons so what we will do is instead of providing the center as the justify content we will say space evenly over here so when we save this file now as you can see there is enough space over here in between all the icons now guys what we can do is simply we can also provide the border radius as well so we will provide the 20 pixels value for the border radius and also we will provide the box shadow so let me just provide the horizontal and vertical box shadow and over here we will provide the shadow as dark blue color this time so when we save this file now as you can see we are getting the dark blue color as the shadow for this particular div tag now guys let us get this div tag at the center of the screen so simply we will provide margin that is equal to auto so as far as the horizontal alignment is concerned we have got the div tag at the center of the screen guys this is just a part of the web page in which case you can provide all these icons which is the part of the analytics and user can interact with these icons in order to like comment or share and if you are new to this youtube channel please make sure that you subscribe to this youtube channel so that you get the notifications for the upcoming videos in which we are going to create more html and css projects now guys so far we have provided the required css properties for this particular div tag now inside the div tag we need to provide the CSS properties for all these links which are being represented by this a tag over here so guys what we will do is simply we will provide the class name over here as a link this time for the a tags and then let me just copy the class names for all the a tags over here so that we can provide the CSS property to this link class so guys let me just copy this link class name over here and then inside this first of all we will provide text decoration as none so that we don't get this underline as you can see so when we save this file now there is no more underline apart from this we want to change the font color to black by default so we provide the black color as the font color so when we save this file now you can see the changes this time 
now guys what we want to do is we want to change the font colors of these icons as well we will keep this heart icon as red color so instead of providing the css properties inside the external style sheet we will simply provide the inline style over here so for this particular i class that is having the heart icon simply we will provide the style and we will say color it is equal to red this time so when we save this file now as you can see we are getting the red color over here apart from this we will also provide the color css property for the other two icons as well so for the comment part let us provide the color as blue over here and for the share part let us provide the other color that is green color this time so guys basically we have the red blue and green color for all these icons when we save this file now as you can see these are the colors that are getting displayed over here now guys when the user gets the mouse cursor on these icons we want to increase its size so what we can do is simply inside the link class we need to refer to this i tag over here so we come to this style.css file we provide this link class and then the i tag over here and then after this we want to make use of the transform css property in which case we will make use of the scale function over here we will say that it should scale by 1.3 times this time so when we save this file now so if you see the changes already there is a scaling that is happening over here now guys we want the scaling on the mouse hover so we have left out the hover pseudo class this time so simply we provide the colon after the i tag and then we say hover pseudo class when we save this file now as you can see these are the default sizes for all these icons and when we get the mouse cursor over here you can see that the scaling is happening by 1.3 times over here let us increase the scaling by 1.5 this time so that it gives a decent look so when we save this file now as you can see this is a scaling that is happening and we want the scaling to happen smoothly so simply for the link class we can provide the transition css property and we can say all over here and let's say we provide 0.5 second as the timing so when we save this file now we still cannot see the transition that is happening smoothly so guys we have done the mistake over here this css property should belong to the i tag this time so basically we will provide the link class followed by the i tag and then over here we will provide the transition css property we will say all and then 0.5 seconds so since we are making the changes for this i tag the transition property should be associated with the i tag over here so when we save this file now and get the mouse cursor over here as you can see the transition is happening now the scaling of the icon is happening to 1.5 times with the 0.5 seconds timing so guys in this way you can provide your own buttons based on your requirements with the help of these icons the links i have already given in the description section below so comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video in which we are going to create more html and the css projects so stay tuned so guys now we are going to create this simple registration form in which case we are going to have multiple input fields over here along with the password input field as well and when the user gets the mouse cursor on any of the input fields as you can see when we click on this input field over here we are going to get this feedback with the help of this box shadow on that input field so guys basically when you click on any of the input fields over here we will have the box shadow for that particular input field and apart from this when we get the mouse cursor on this register button it is going to scale itself with the help of the scale function so guys we are going to create this registration form so let us move to the vs code so now we will create another folder over here inside the html css projects we will name it as registration form so guys basically we have this new folder that is created inside this we are going to create the html and the css files so basically we have the index.html file and the style.css file which will be the external style sheet over here now guys inside the html file we are going to create this html document and then we will have the title that is registration form over here for the title tag and then we will also link the external style sheet with the help of this link tag over here so we have the href it is equal to style.css file now guys over here inside the body tag we will have the div tag 
with the class container inside which we are going to have the different input fields that will help the user in order to complete the registration so guys basically we have this div tag with the class container over here now let us provide certain input fields over here so we use the input tag along with the type it is equal to text and then the first input field will be the full name over here we will also keep the id value as same that is full name this time and then we will also have the placeholder and we will say enter full name over here so guys basically we have the full name as the first input field apart from this let us also have the class attribute this time and then we will say input hyphen field over here so guys basically we are going to provide certain css properties to this class name and then after this let us provide certain line breaks over here so we have couple of line breaks this time now guys similarly we will provide more input fields over here so let me just copy paste this line of code and then after the full name we will ask the user to provide the username over here and then the same value we will provide for the id part as well and for the placeholder as well and then for the third input field we will ask the user to provide password so that the user can set the username and password over here so basically we have the password as the third field and then we will ask to confirm the password so basically user is supposed to provide the password once again so that there is no mistake that is made by the user so basically we have confirm password as the placeholder this time guys for these two input fields that is password and confirm confirm password we will keep the type as password over here so that it is not visible to anyone else on the screen so basically we have set the type as password over here and then guys in the end we want the email of the user to be set so basically so we have provided the name value as email over here and also the id as well and for the placeholder as well we have updated the enter email this time so guys basically we have all these input fields inside the container and then guys after this also we will provide the button as well for registration so simply we provide the button tag over here and also we will provide the class as register over here so this is the button tag with the class register and also we will have the text that is register for this particular button let me just save this file now and start the server so that we can see the changes on the web page so guys as you can see these are all the input fields by default that are getting displayed over here we have not provided any css properties so far so guys basically we are going to provide the css properties one by one in order to make this registration form look more attractive so guys what we will do is inside the style.css file first of all we will make use of this class name that is container over here so we simply provide dot followed by the container class and then we will have the width of 30 percent so let's say we have the width of 30 percent over here also we will provide certain background color so let's say we have this light version of green color as the background color this time so let me just save this file now as you can see we have this light version of the green color as the background color over here apart from this we will also set the display it is equal to flex and since all the flex items must be present in a column so basically we will set the flex direction as column over here so when we save this file now as you can see these are all the flex items that are displayed right now now guys apart from this we also want to set the padding as well so simply we will keep the padding as 20 pixels and also we will provide certain border radius over here so we provide the border radius of 20 pixels once again we will provide the box shadow so over here we will provide 10 pixels of blur effect with the color that is black color over here when we save this file now as you can see this is the registration form that is getting displayed this time now guys apart from this we also want the margin it is equal to auto so that we can get the registration form at the center of the screen over here as far as the horizontal alignment is concerned so as you can see this is a very simple registration form that the user can use in order to register himself or herself now guys after this let us provide certain css properties for these input fields over here so simply we are going to make use of this class name that is input hyphen field so let me just copy this class name and then inside the style.css file we will make use of this class name over here first of all let us provide certain padding so let's say we have the padding of 10 pixels over here also we have the border radius of 10 pixels let me just save this file now as you can see this is the way that the registration form is getting displayed this time 
apart from this let us also remove the line breaks that we have provided since it is creating the extra spaces in between the input fields so guys over here we have only kept one line break let me just save this file now and as you can see these are all the input fields that are getting displayed over here now guys what we want to do is when the user gets the mouse cursor over here and clicks on any of the input fields we want a certain box shadow to be provided to these input fields so simply inside the style.css file we have to make use of this class name that is input field over here and we will make use of the pseudo class that is focus this time so guys basically this pseudo class is responsible in order to provide any css properties when the user gets the mouse cursor on the input field and clicks inside the input field over here so that is the time when those css properties will be applied so guys over here what we will do is simply we will provide the box shadow over here and this time we will say 10 pixels of box shadow and we will provide the blue color as the box shadow this time when we save this file now when we get the mouse cursor over here and click on it as you can see we are getting the blue color over here and when we click on the other input fields as well we are getting the blue color as the box shadow let us increase the blur effect to 15 pixels over here when we save this file now as you can see the blue color is now getting more visible over here with the light green background color that we have provided to the container now guys apart from this let us also provide certain css properties to this register button over here so simply we will make use of this register class and then we will provide certain css properties to this register class by using the dot character so over here first of all we will provide the width as minimum content over here let me just save this file now as you can see only the required space is being taken by this particular button also for this container we will set the align items so that we get all the items at the center of the container so when we say align items it is equal to center as you can see all the input fields and the register button is now at the center of the container and for the input field we will set the width as 80 percent over here so that there is no extra spaces that is left as you can see on the left hand side and the right hand side of the input fields so basically we will keep the width as 80 percent over here so as you can see 80 percent of the space is being taken by all the input fields this time now guys for the register button let us provide more css properties over here so we will provide the background color over here as green color also we will set the color as white color that is the font color over here and then apart from this we will also set the padding of let's say 5 pixels this time and the border radius as well so simply we will say border radius of 10 pixels and we save this file now as you can see this is the button that is getting displayed over here we will also remove the border so simply we will say border it is equal to none and let us increase the padding to 10 pixels this time so this is a decent register button that is getting displayed over here also we want to change the cursor icon so we will set the cursor it is equal to pointer so when we get the mouse cursor over here on the register button it is getting converted to the hand tool over here now guys apart from this when the user gets the mouse cursor on this register button we want to scale the button so how we can do that so simply we will make use of the over pseudo class over here so we will say register colon over and then simply we will say transform and this time we will make use of the scale and it should scale by 1.2 times over here so when we save this file now and when we get the mouse cursor over here as you can see the button is scaling itself by 1.2 times that we have provided and if we want the smooth transition simply we will provide the transition css property to this register button over here so we provide transition and we will say all and this time we will say 0.5 seconds as the timing when we save this file now and now when we get the mouse cursor as you can see there's a smooth transition that is happening over here the register button is increasing its size so guys basically this is the way that you can provide the transition effect to any of the html elements based on your requirements and then guys when we get the mouse cursor over here and click on any of the input fields basically we are getting the box shadow of the blue color this time so that the user gets the feedback that this is the input field that is getting clicked and you are supposed to provide the data inside this field so guys simply let us provide certain data over here so we have programming for beginners that is the name of this youtube channel which you should definitely subscribe if you have not done so and let us provide the programming as the username 
also we will provide the password so let's say we provide some password over here and also we want to confirm password so simply we provide the password and then we will provide a certain email id over here so program at gmail.com and then simply the user have to go to register over here in order to register himself or herself so guys this is a very simple registration form that we have created just by using the plain html and the css properties so guys comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video in which we are going to create more html and the css projects so stay tuned